I've been playing around with some AI in a 3D game recently, and I realized most people probably don't understand how quick it is to set up something like a nav mesh and have agents move around on it. And there's so many videos out there that kind of cover what a nav mesh and a nav agent is, but this is all about how you can set it up really, really fast and have something moving around on a nav mesh. So I have an empty 3D project here in Unity. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my hierarchy and create a cube. And we'll reset its transform. And then I'm gonna make the scale 20 in the X and 30 in the Y, just so we have this nice play field here. Right, we just have this big cube. And then I made this floor material. It's literally just a, you can just go to create material uh, and then click on albedo and I made it brown. And so I'll click and drag that on my cube. For fun, we'll right click and make another cube. Call this wall. We'll reset it and I'll drag it up a little bit. And this I'll just make 10 in the X for now. So we have two cubes, literally just two simple cubes that you make in your hierarchy. One's a wall, one's a floor. Now let's make a player. So I'm gonna right click and go to 3D object and make a capsule. I'll reset the transform and I'll drag this guy over here and I'll give him this player material, which is just blue. So at this point when I play the game, I literally just have a capsule on top of a floor with a wall in the middle. And what I wanna do is be able to click or right click on this and move our guy, right? It should do some pathfinding. So right now we haven't added any components to our game objects. Everything is just default objects that you can make in the Unity hierarchy. I'm gonna click on the player now though and go to add component and add a nav mesh agent. The other component we have is a nav mesh obstacle, which might make sense to put on a wall. And you'll get a whole bunch of options here but you actually don't even have to do this, but you can, it does give you more flexibility. We can talk about that in a second. Okay, so we just have our player with a nav mesh agent on it and nothing else has been changed. We can now create a nav mesh. And to do that, we can go to window, AI, navigation. And so in this agents tab, you can kind of configure how fat, how tall, how skinny your agents are, because that'll help you with like maneuvering through obstacles, but we're not gonna do any of that. Right now, let's just go to objects. And we'll click on our floor and you'll see the floor is highlighted, right? And we have this navigation static checkbox that's unchecked. Let's check that. And then navigation area now is selectable. And we want this to be walkable, right? The floor should be walkable, that makes sense. We can then click on our wall and go to navigation static again. And for the wall, well, we don't want the walls to be walkable, so we'll select not walkable. And then we can simply go to the bake tab and hit bake. And when we do, you now notice this blue display showing up on our floor. And if you look at our wall, well, there's nothing there because we want to walk around our wall. So this is great. We already have our nav mesh set up, right? This was really fast. It's like three button presses. And there's absolutely so much fine tuning and really, really cool things you can do with the nav mesh. But let's just keep it simple for this tutorial. Let's get you started, right? So we have our player who's a nav mesh agent. And in here you can kind of tweak like their movement speed and all stuff like that. And they're standing on a nav mesh. So now let's make it so when you click, you actually move our player on the nav mesh and they'll know how to maneuver around this wall obstacle. So I'll create a new script. I'll call this player controller. You could also call it like click to move or whatever you want. Okay, we'll drag on our player controller and open it up. All right, so we have our player controller. I'm gonna leave update, but I'll get rid of start. And so the first thing we need is a reference to our nav mesh agent. And in order to get access to that, we need to import our AI package. So I can say using unity engine.ai. And with that using statement, we now can say public nav mesh agent, right? That's the component we put on our player. We'll call this agent. In update, I'm just gonna do a simple check to see if we're right clicking and then make our player move there. You can of course adapt this to anything you want. This is just the basics to get you started. And to do that, we can say if input dot get mouse button down, and then zero is left click, one is right click. So I'll say one, because I think right click makes more sense for me. So now we need to get a point where we clicked on the nav mesh and then tell our agent to move there. And a good way to do that is to use ray casting. And we store that information in array. So I can say ray move position is equal to camera.main.screen.point.ray 
And then we need to pass in a vector three position, which is gonna be our mouse position, which is a vector three. And so it's always worth pointing out this camera.main function, by the way, is just gonna do a hard search for, you know, a game object called main camera and pull off its camera component. So if you don't have a main camera, you could definitely make a public camera reference up here and then pass this in somehow and then use this one instead. But it's a fun demo and I'm using camera.main, so don't get mad. So now what we wanna say is did our ray cast actually hit anything and if it does well we want to tell our agent to move there so what we can say is if physics which is capitalized dot raycast and you'll see that it takes a ray parameter so we'll pass in our move position and then there's also an out variable that's called hit info so we can say out var hit info and because we have this out keyword here we're actually going to be able to use this hit info right away and we can say agent dot set destination so we're telling our nav mesh agent to go here and we'll pass in the hit info dot point which is a vector three target and so if you don't know anything about ray casting this is probably confusing and if you didn't want to use your mouse you didn't you wouldn't have to really do any of this if you just wanted to head to a position you could literally just do agent dot set destination and pass in a vector three and they'll just head to that. But because I'm using my mouse to do this, you know, we have to do the checks above it. But with this one script right here, we can now go back to our player game object, click and drag our nav mesh agent component into the variable. So now we can play and I can right click anywhere on this nav mesh, right? So I can right click like here and the player heads there. I can right click over here. If I try and right click off the nav mesh, you'll notice like nothing's happening because we're not actually detecting anything with our ray cast. But if I right click, let's say behind this wall, you'll see that our player is actually smart enough to go around it. So I can right click back over here and he knows to always go avoid the wall because it's not a part of the nav mesh. So he won't actually go and try and touch it. And so right now you can just right click and move. If you watch my command pattern video, then you could easily implement that. And I think actually Jason Wyman has a video where he does this more or less with the same example. So it's worth trying to set that up if you want to do something like an RTS game. Otherwise you don't even have to use this mouse. This could be useful for your AI agents to like chase your player or do something like that or just move around in your scene. And like I showed you, this is really quick to set up in your navigation panel. And there's so many more configurable things and really cool stuff the nav mesh can do but I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse at how to set one up fast because it might encourage you now to actually start playing with the stuff I remember the first time I did this a while back I was shocked at how quick it was because I actually built out like AI pathfinding in XNA and that took let's just say a lot more effort right so like this video you know if it helped you out if you thought it was interesting you know comment any questions yet and I'll see you guys in the next one <laughs>